Mm. Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. We back. Back every week, man. I hey, hey, I've been on the steady roll of verbal cardio. I've been back. I've been doing daddy issues. I've been doing verbal cardio week after week. I'm back, man. I'm out here, man. Consistency, McGee. I'm out here, co-host of the decade, of the century, of all time. Water is my co-host, and water is back. Man, look at the, look at the damage I've done today. Started this gallon fresh. Now look at where we at, man. 1.30 p.m. This is where I'm at already. 1.30 p.m. I peed three times today. I peed three times, but you know what I'm saying? Peeing is good. Peeing is good, man. That's it. A lot of people don't want to pee a lot. That's why they be like, I don't want to, I don't want to drink like that because I don't want to drink the water like that because I don't want to be peeing all the time. Peeing is good. Filter yourself out, man. Get in on this water, man. I want y'all drinking more water. The things I want you to take away from me, you're drinking more water, you care about your water intake, and I want you looking at animals differently. Now that you know me, now that you've been hanging out with me, now that you, you, you've been with me for a while, I want you looking at animals differently. I want you to see animals. I want your imagination to fly. I want your imagination that every time you see animals, I want you to really be like, yo, what are they thinking about? What are they saying? You know what I'm saying? Give those animals a name. Not just your pets, but any animal you see. Give them a name. I want your imagination running wild. That's what I want you to get from me. I want you to like animals better because of me. That's, that's the legacy I want. I want you drinking more water, and I want you like looking at animals in a new light. If I, if I can give that, if I can give that energy out, that my job is done. My job is done. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my patron saints over here, man. Simone, Rainbow, Crystal, Sherelle, Miss Smiley, Chris Reynolds, Tanisha Turner, Shoe Game Shan. Your big debut career coaching and consulting. I'm going to still clown that name because it's all business in the, in the YouTube section. Uh, to Jesse, Sharon McD, uh, Chuck, Chuck in the Wild, Styler. Savants, J. Edwards, Ebony ATL, Nana P, Pretty Pisces, Celeste, Ray, uh, Chaz Ali, Latoya Larkin, Texas T. That's a new, that's a new name right there. Uh, Late, Tika Scott, Lana, Seanville74, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to the patron saints, man. I love y'all passionately, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Can't say that enough. Listen, comedians. For Tony Baker and friends, if I haven't worked with you on a show, if we haven't done a show together, or I haven't seen you live, Tony Baker and friends is not for you yet. I try to keep the I try to keep the booking simple. I only book comedians that I've worked with already or I've seen you live. That's that's usually the standard. So comedians, don't be bringing comedians for the introduction. If I don't know them yet, I don't know them yet. I'll see them eventually. I'm not looking, I'm not looking for new comedians. I'm not looking for new comedians. It's Tony Baker and friends. So I'm just throwing that out there. For future reference. And I'm going to clip this and post it to my Instagram. But, you know, if you want to get on the show, I would have to have seen you live already. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. So, for future reference, that's that's the show format for now. Um, I just want to get that off my chest because I don't like I don't like to be cornered, you know, from from comics. I don't like to be cornered. 
So there's that. Um, I'm out here, man. Memorial Day. How was y'all weekend? What'd you do? What'd you get into? Did you have, did you go to a cookout? Did you build? Did you stay home? Did you relax? Did you cook just for the family? What'd you do? You know what I'm saying? I went to Angel and Marcus house on Sunday, hung out, had a great time, great food, great people. It got a little chilly. So I wasn't outside with the fellas as long as I wanted to be. So I was in there with the ladies. The ladies was in the house. I was in there with them. You know, from the outside looking in, probably looks soft. Like Tony in here with the with the women folk. I was in there, man. It, it was chilly outside. I wasn't I wasn't dressed for the chilly. I thought it was gonna be warmer than it was. I had on shorts, my thighs was out. I had on a regular t-shirt. I didn't know it was gonna be that chilly on on, on Sunday. So you know. I, I went inside. But I can hold court with the ladies. I can hold court with the ladies. I can, I can, I can double dip. Some people can't double dip. Some people can't double dip. Some people, when it comes to conversation at the social setting, they either can just do the fellas, or you know, or just like a mixed house. I can, I can do both. I can go out there with the fellas, and we'd be like, yeah, manhood. Man stuff. We talking about man. Yeah, yeah, changing oil. Yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, changing that oil. Yep, my beard. My beard came in. Yeah, yeah, man. Manhood. Women be tripping. Yeah, rap. Burlap sacks and like, you know, manhood. Yeah, cigars. Yeah, I eat, I eat corduroy every morning. I can do that. And I can go in there with the women folk and have a good time, have a good conversation, have a good flow in there. I can do both. And I was doing both Sunday at Angel and Marcus' crib. Marcus threw down on the grill. He was grilling. He had options for your boy. I want to say this. I want to say this. Shout out to Marcus and Angel. They hosted something for, you know, the weekend. He was throwing stuff on the grill. He had vegan options for your boy. That's what I appreciate. There was vegan burgers and vegan sausages in there. That's what I appreciate. When I pull up on Angel and Marcus, they have vegan options for your boy. They do it correctly. They don't just relegate me to that little weak ass side veggie platter that you can get from every grocery store where it's just some ashy ass carrots the old ass brown on the tip celery cold broccoli and some hard ass cauliflower calling in the goddamn day hey hey tone we know you vegetarian we got you the platter i'm so sick of that platter now don't get me wrong i'll be eating them ashy ass carrots i will eat baby carrots for real. But give me something else. Give me something else. Give me something, man. Come on, man. And cold, bro cold broccoli ain't the move. Cold broccoli ain't it, man. Cold broccoli, ashy-ass cold broccoli is not the move. It's not. I don't care what kind of ranch you're dipping in, man. Cold broccoli is not the move. That cold cauliflower? You know broccoli and cauliflower are cousins. When they cold, man, ain't nobody checking for that. And broccoli give me gas. So if I'm going to take the gas, if I'm going to sit here and take the gas, I need that broccoli to be cooked, sautéed, soft. If I'm going to take the L in these gas streets, if I'm going to get the premium unleaded 91 gas in my stomach, because of the broccoli, I'm going to need that shit to be cooked at the very least. Sick of that platter, man. So shout out to Marcus, man. He put the vet, the vegan burgers on the grill, the vegan sausage. It was good. I tore it up. I was in there eating. I was eating the burgers, the sausage. I had the goddamn, they had like a fruit salad in there. I was all in. I, I, can, I was tearing that fruit bowl up. I single-handedly, I think I single-handedly ate 75%, 79.6% of the fruit salad bowl. I, I, I did that by myself. 
And I went up in Angel and Marcus' pantry, and I got the agave, and I added that to the fruit. Man, listen. I was in there. I was having the time of my life. Double dipping. Double dipping. I just want to say, listen, I'm a good time in social functions. I'm a good time. I'm a good time, man. You want you want me at your you want me at your game nights. You want me at your little cookouts. You want me there. I'm a good time. I tell you, I'm not a good time if it's hella smoky up in there, or if it's at a loud club. I'm not a good time. But if we had a house, apartment, whatever, I'm a great time. I'm out here, man. Trust me. I'm out here. Y'all don't want no parts of me on the social element, man. I'm a good ass time. Just so you know. Just want to put that out there, man. I just met like Angel's aunt. We was having a great time, man. I was winning her aunt over, man. I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I was me and the aunt was vibing like, like we had met each other years ago. I'm a cold piece, man. I'm a threat. And and the thing about me. It's a social element. It's a social function. I want you off that phone. Get off your phone. Get off your phone. I'll be on phone patrol. I'm notorious for being like, yo, get off your phone. We building. Even though, even though I'll be on my phone, I don't want nobody else on their phone. I don't want y'all on your phone, the whole social event, man. Put your phone down. We building. That's me. Quinn, Quinn trip trying to get on her phone. I was like, yo, man, we building, man. Get off your phone. I'm out here. So if you want to show up to the to the social function and be on your phone, don't come around me with it. Because I'm going to call you out. And you can call me out. Call me out. If I can dish it, I can take it, man. When you see me on the phone... After I was just like, make it off your phones, because Marcus caught me. Marcus was like, get off your phone, Tony. We build. I'm like, you right, you right. I'll put it down. And then Quinn called me as well. She was like, get off your phone. I was like, hey, I was playing solitaire. Cold bust. But I'm a good time. Let the record reflect. All right. Instagram people, I'm cutting this off. If you want to see the rest of this live, join my Patreon. Click the link in my bio. Join up today. You know what I'm saying? Get in on this. Stop trying to get the free stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm cutting this off. Boom. Now, it's just me and the Saints. Me and the Saints. So the Saints have cooked up some topics. The Saints out here cooking up some topics. Wait, let me find them first of all. First, first and foremost, let me find the topics that y'all cooked up. Let's see what we got going on here. Verbal cardio. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Savvy G wanted me to do a whole episode of Six Degrees of Separation. I'll do a couple of those. I'll do a couple of those right now. Give me two actors. And I'll, I'll link them together. Off the top, freestyle. No Googling, no imdb and I'll link them together as best I can. You know what I'm saying? I'll link them together as best I can in the shortest amount of time. Give me, give me something. Give me, give me something real quick. Oh, you playing with the fam yesterday? Yeah. Tim Allen and Bill Murray. That's the first one up. Savvy G. Tim Allen to Bill Murray. Okay, Tim Allen and Bill Murray. Let's go. Let's get it. All right? Hmm. Tim Allen and Bill Murray, huh? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't know if he was in that or not. Ah, uh, I don't know if he was in that. Okay. Oh. Hold on. Mm, 
So I'm not going to do voice work. So Toy Story is off the table. I'm not going to do voice work. So boom, 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 boom. Tim Allen. Wait, Tim Allen and who? I just lost it. Oh, oh, Bill Murray. Okay. Tim Allen and Bill Murray. So Tim Allen was in... Oh, hold on a second. I got to give y'all some vocal engagement while I piece this together. Tim Allen. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Here's the thing. I can't remember off the top of my head which Wes Anderson movies Bill Murray has been in. I know he was in The Life Aquatic. Uh, I feel like he was in more um, Wes Anderson movies. And Wes Anderson movies usually have a stacked all-star cast, right? But I can't, I can't, I'm fuzzy on the Wes Anderson joints and who was in what. So I'm just like, damn. Tim Allen, Bill Murray. Okay. Mm hmm. Oh, wait a minute now. Hold on. Okay. Tim Allen was in, ah, oh, damn it. Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, oh, damn, I can't remember the name of that movie. Oh, damn. Okay. Somebody say that the sound go out. Oh, y'all sound tripping? They say the sound tripping to me. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Tim Allen and Bill Murray. Hmm. Tim Allen, Bill Murray. Okay, here we go. Bill Murray was in Bill Murray was in Ant-Man and the Quantum Mania with um Oh, okay. Bill Murray was in Ant-Man and the Quantum Mania with Paul Rudd who was in Avengers Endgame with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, who was in Doctor Strange with Chiwetel Geo 4 who was in Red Belt with Tim Allen. Did the sound come back? That's the connect. So Tim Allen, so Bill Murray was in Ant Man and the Quantum Mania, the Quantum Realm with Paul Rudd, who was in Avengers Endgame with Benedict Cumberbatch, who was in Doctor Strange with Chiwetelli Geo 4, who was in Red Belt with Tim Allen. There we go. There we go. Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman, huh? huh. Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Okay. Uh... Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Um, let me think for a second. Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Okay. Um, damn, Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman was in What has Morgan Freeman been in? 
Oh, Morgan Freeman was in The Dark Knight and stuff. Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Donald Sutherland to Morgan Freeman. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hmm, wrong movie. Donald Sutherland was in... I'm trying to think of Donald Sutherland's resume. Donald Sutherland is in the Hunger Games. Donald Sutherland is in the Hunger Games, correct? Donald Sutherland. Oh, wait, to Morgan Freeman. God damn it, I just lost. I just lost what I thought I had. Piss. I just lost what I thought I had. My bad, y'all. Hold on a second. Let me get my feet back together. Uh, let me get my feet back together. Hmm. Oh, hold on now. Donald Sutherland was in The Hunger Games with, oh, piss. Um, damn. Uh, hmm. Morgan Freeman to Donald Sutherland. The sound is still trash. Oh, I'll keep, I looked at y'all. Y'all can't be giving the answers. They were an outbreak together? Y'all just ruined the whole shit, man. <laughs> you can't be ruining the whole shit. If they was an outbreak together, you just ruined the whole goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Can't do this with y'all. Can't do this with y'all, man. You can't be giving the answers. All right, we moving on. Um, so Kristen R wants to talk about people who dress up in theme to go see movies. Someone commented about the fact that women were dressing up in purple and turquoise for the Little Mermaid premieres and said it was childish. I beg to differ. If people want to dress up in character about the movies they're going to see, so fucking what? So what? How is that childish? Is it childish for is it childish for a person to go to a sporting event in the jerseys of the players? Is that also childish? Is it childish to go to a concert of your favorite artist with their shirt on? Is it childish for me to go to a Beyonce concert with a Beyonce shirt on? Let people enjoy things, man. Let people enjoy things. It's not childish. You're a fan. People dress up all the time. Is Halloween childish? Is Halloween childish? Keep the same energy across the board. Let people dress up, man. Let people have fun and have a good time and be excited about something. Let them have that, man. They're having a good time. They ain't bothering nobody. They ain't bothering nobody because they want to dress up like Ariel from The Little Mermaid and enjoy the experience. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing childish about it. It's just people having a good time and they want to dress up. People love to dress up sometimes, man. Come on, man. Dang, man. Let people enjoy things. And be excited and they want to be a part of it. And they want to they want to show people that they're a part of it. And like, yo, man, this. Let people have a good time, man. 
It's not childish at all, in my opinion. Not childish at all. Every time I see people at my shows with my shirt on, I get emotional. I get emotional, like seriously. Like I, it'd be it'd be damn near tears of joy every time I see it. I'll be like, man, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm soft or what. Whenever I see people in line to come see me, I get emotional every single time. It's something, it's something very like special about that to me it's just like man y'all are taking the time out of your busy lives your busy day to spend it with me to spend your money to spend your time with me i'll be emotional i'll be like man like when i go to a comedy club and i see the line outside and i just be like man they really out here for me I'll be, my eyeballs jiggle at the thought of it. I'll be like, man, that's, I appreciate it. So, you know, so when they got the shirt on, that's double the eyeball jiggle. So let people enjoy things, man. Let people have a good time. And like, you know, because I know I'm a supporter. Like, stuff I'm a fan of, I'll be excited. I'll be excited to go to movies. I'll be excited to go to a concert and support. You know, I was Wu-Tang McGee, man. I had Wu-Wear shirts. I had Wu-Tang shirts, earrings, necklaces. I was Wu-Tang out. A Wu-Tang birthday cake. I was excited and loving it, you know. Happy to support because I, I, I love the, the content. So let people enjoy things, man. Tight asses. Childish, man. You childish. Whoever said this. People have a good time. Venus J says, teaching people what your boundaries are professionally and romantically because people be acting like they, they can, they, oh, people acting like they can be rude sometimes. So letting people know what your boundaries are professionally and romantically. A lot of people have a hard time accepting your boundaries when when they when it interferes with how they want to move towards you. So let's say you you set up what your boundaries are, and they, oh oh oh, I'm sorry, I you know, they don't they don't they don't accept it well because you just interfered with their own setup that they already had in place for you, and what they don't realize is that. It doesn't work like that for everybody. Me, me included. Like I'm guilty of sometimes, you know, getting taken aback when somebody sets up a certain boundary, and I was like, oh, oh. But then I get my feet together, and I realize, okay, I have to, I have to come at you this way, or I have to, you know, treat you this way. Everybody, we're all individuals. Everybody has their different boundaries set up, so. How you are doesn't necessarily click with everybody. So, you know, it's good to have a boundary in place so people know how to interact with you and deal with you and be around you. So it's like, and it's okay to set that boundary and be vocal about that boundary. And like, whatever whatever doesn't work for you or whatever you need in place to be able to function in the professional setting or romantic setting, be clear about it. And then if people can't handle it, then then, then guess what? You won't be working with them or, you know, you'll keep your distance from them in the workplace or, you know, y'all just not going to be able to link romantically. If the boundaries can't be respected or you can't come to some kind of common ground. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but people should not be as offended when they lay out the boundary for you because it's not, it's not necessarily personal. I mean, it kind of it kind of is, but not really. Because I mean, it's like, yo, I don't like it when certain people do this, and then you set that boundary. And everybody got several several barriers, you know, set up. So for me, it's it's just like, watch out, man. You know, and a lot of people know, 
a lot of people know what I what I like and what I don't like already. Like people that don't even really know me personally, people know I don't like talking on the phone like that. People know that. That's a boundary. Like you know what I'm saying. Ease up on calling me out the blue. That's a that's a little boundary. And people people get offended by that. I can't call you. You ain't going to take my call. Or they want to bust through my barrier and be like, I'm going to call you anyway. Just because you don't like talking on the phone, I'm going to call you because that's how I communicate. I'm like, all right, just don't be offended when I don't always answer. Or don't be offended when I don't call back. Or don't be offended when I'm not, when I'm not always doing what you want me to do on the communication front. And, and some people get offended and be like, well, why we got to text you all the time? You don't have to text me all the time. If texting doesn't work for you, then we won't talk as much. And that's fine. Because I'm not always wanting to be on the phone with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's nothing personal. It's just I got to be in the right frame of mind to be on the phone all the goddamn time. So, you know. That's what it is for me. Respect these boundaries. Uh, Erica Gabriel says, let's talk about people not knowing how to grill anymore. Oh, grilling is an art. There's an art to grilling properly. You know what I'm saying? It's more than just throwing meats on the hot grill outside. It's more to it than that. You can't just go out there and just sling some meat on the grill, cover it up, and then walk away. There's more to it than that. Grilling re requires prep. You got to pre-prep. You got to pre-prep. You got to pre-season. You got to pre-marinate. All of this matters. You can't just pull the meat out. I'm going to throw a little seasoning on it, then throw it on the grill. You can do that, but it ain't going to... It ain't going to taste as good because you you didn't you didn't tenderize, you didn't marinate. You didn't you didn't soak, you didn't pre nothing. There was no pre. Some people be grilling out here, no pre. You got to pre when you're grilling. The pre is key. The pre is key. The longer you let that stuff marinate, saturate in the seasonings, if you will, the better it's going to come out on that grill. And you got to monitor the grill. You can't just throw the meat on there and leave. You got to keep watching, man. You got to be turning them things, man. You got to be turning stuff over, rotating, moving it around. You got to get the heat just right. You got to know how to layer stuff on the grill. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant flow. You got to be in there. You got to be moving it around. You don't want one side all extra charred and too crispy and then the other side is raw. Come on, man. There's an art to it. There's a science. You got to be mindful of what you're grilling. It's more than just throwing it on and walking away. Nah, man. We're not doing that on the grill. You got to be in there. You got to clock in. You got to be attentive, man. It's ro It's romance. It's romantic. You got, you got to be, you got to be texting that grill. Be like, hey, what you doing? How you feeling today? You got to call and text that grill. You got to compliment the grill. You got to be like, you, you looking real nice today. You looking hot today. You looking hot. I like how I like how you moving today. You know what I'm saying? You got a nice tarp. You got to compliment the grill, man. You got to uplift. You got to give the grill words of affirmation. You got to be out there. You got to be attentive. You got to be putting the quality time in on that grill. You can't just hit it and quit it on the grill. You can't just smash and then walk away. You can't just smash and never call back. You got to put the time in, man, the love and the care and the, and the check-ins, the quality time. You got to be out there. The best grillers be out there, man. They be out there manning that grill the whole time. Marcus was on the grill the whole time. Coming in and then going right back to the grill. The grill was in range. He was never too far from that grill. He was like, yo, man, got to monitor this. And he did the pre-prep. The pre-prep, man. 
So that's the key, man. Just because you throwing it on a hot surface, that ain't enough. That ain't enough, man. It's a, it's a whole lifestyle of this. Just throwing it on that hot skill, that, that ain't enough. So you got to do better, man. You got to put the, the real time in. Uh, so Salim wants to talk about the crazy man opening the plane door. Let me tell you something, man. So a dude on the flight, on a commercial flight, opens the, opens the plane door mid-flight. Opens the door mid-flight. My question is, where was everybody else when he started opening the door? Because it's not like you can just open the door, just turn the knob, and then, you know, the door is open. You got to put work in. You got to pull stuff back and grab a latch. You got to peel this down and do all of this. When did he do it? How did it happen? When did he do it? Did he do it while everybody was kind of like napping? Was it that part of the flight where it's kind of quiet and the flight attendants ain't really moving around like that and everybody's kind of dozed off? Was it then? Like, when did he have time to get that? You ever look at the plane door? It's a lot going on on that door. You ain't just going to go up there and casually open that shit. So I want to know what he did. And did he have experience with plane doors to know how to open it efficiently and quickly? And where did he go after he opened it? Did he just open it and go sit down? He's like, yeah, bye, huh? Huh? And then he went to sit down like, what happened? I got questions. Where did he go after he opened that door? And imagine being in that row, the exit row, where you're getting the fresh, you on the front lines of the suction of what's going on. Imagine that. You looking outside at your death. You in row 16, D, E, and F. Y'all just sitting there taking it. It, it feel like you about to go skydiving. It feel like your whole row about to get sucked out the plane. That's got to be terrifying. I can't imagine. And you just looking at it. The air is coming in cold and heavy because you're going 400 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? You sitting there, your paperwork, your documents getting sucked out, your napkins. Your little blanket just flew out the plane. Your little pillow, the little plastic wrap the pillow was in getting sucked out. Your purse. My chapstick. That dude was wild. Why did he open the door? What was the plan? I can see if you open the door and jump out, but then, nah, I'm going to open the door and stay on the flight. I just want to disrupt this shit here. I don't like what's going on, man. Y'all flying, y'all going somewhere. It's too mundane, man. I'm opening the goddamn exit door mid-flight. I'm jazzing this bitch up. I'm tired of going on flights and the door ain't open. I'm opening that shit today. Like, when did he come to that decision on the on the plane? He was like, you know what, man? I'm going to open this goddamn door. He was looking around like, I'm opening this shit. And did he plan it as soon as, soon as he booked the flight? Was he online like, Expedia, huh? Where can I get the cheapest flight that I can open the goddamn door? Ooh, okay. 198 one way, perfect, because I'm not coming back. Perfect. I'm opening the goddamn door on that flight. What the hell was the, what was the logic? What was the mindset? I'm opening that door. Was he looking at the door during the flight? Was he watching it? Was he like, oh, oh no, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I, I don't need any drinks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna open that goddamn door. What'd you say, sir? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. I said, uh, you know, I'm from B More. Yeah. As soon as everybody go to sleep, I'm opening this goddamn door. Y'all want to put me in the middle seat? I'm gonna change that. Y'all gonna put me in the rest seat? He was plotting. He was looking. He was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me, man. I got I got no clue. I don't know what the logic was. I don't know why. But I would love to ask him. 
I was like, what was you thinking? Why would you do this? I want to know why you did it when you thought about doing it. Did you book the flight just to do it? And what you had for dinner last night? I want to know what he had for dinner the night before he did this. I want to know. I got to know. Um, Annette Rogers says, what happens when you finally come to the realization that you are not always right? And a lot of what we think and how we move in the world is based off of our childhood, which was not necessarily right. It's a big adjustment for some people, me included. We're not always right, y'all. We're not always right out here. We think we are. We think we'd be dropping bars. We think the way we handle stuff is right. A lot of people are self-aware and they'll tell you, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was this. I was that. But a lot of people think like they, they're right 80% of the time. When in actuality, they probably right 47% of the time. Not always right. Your way is not always healthy. Your way is not always the best option. In our minds, we may feel like that, but the reality is you probably write 62% of the time when you thought it was 89. I'll be wrong a lot. I'll be wrong. I'll be wrong. But I can admit that. I'll be wrong, man. You know what I'm talking about? The stuff, the stuff that I grew up thinking, and then you, you you realize that you know what, that wasn't a good line of thinking right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I'm glad I've outgrown that. I'm glad I got a new perspective on this, on that. You know what I mean? So, but a lot of people can't handle being wrong. A lot of people don't even like to say I don't know. A lot of people don't need. Many people have trouble saying I don't know. It's so simple, man. It's okay to not know. You ain't got to know everything. But don't bullshit around and fart around into some kind of answers just so you can feel like, man, I got all the knowledge. You don't. And that's fine, man. Give me a strong I don't know. Give me a strong I don't know. I respect it. When I don't know something, I'll be like, I don't know. And then I ponder, I might be able to dig around for a more concrete answer, but sometimes I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I can help you. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how long it would take to get to the moon. I don't know. When people ask me for directions, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to tap dance and try to send you the long way or be mistaken just, to, just so I can feel like, oh, I, I really helped you. No, nah, man, I don't know, man. I don't know where we at. I just got here, man. I'm from, I'm from out of town. I got nothing for you. I can tell you, just get on your phone and Google the shit. I ain't got my phone on me. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Tell them, how come you don't like talking on the phone? I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing for you, man. I don't know sometimes. And that's fine. But just know that some of the hardcore patterns and like standards that you that you live in, that you dwell in, that you love, that you hold on to, sometimes them shits is wrong. How you move, the way you view people, wrong. But we want to hang in there. We want to hold on to it just because it's been that way for years for you. And then you come to the realization, you know what? That shit is wrong. And then how you carry it after that? How you going to carry? But just know you ain't always right. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. I'm not always right even with what I'm talking about right now. Shit could be mad wrong. But you know, here we are. Tanisha Turner asks, are you happy where you are in your career right now? Um, I'm happy. I'm grateful. Uh... I'm glad. I'm excited. But I want I want more. I want more. I still have I still have goals to attain. I'm happy right now. I'm blessed, extremely grateful. Like I marvel all the time and like, yo, I really I really built something. 
Like, I think about that all the time. Like, man, I really built something out here. Really came out here with a dream and, like, and it wasn't in vain. Like, the big move out here, it wasn't in vain. So I'm grateful. I'm mindful of that. I'm just like, yo, that's amazing, man. You know what I'm saying? When I think about where I started to where I in, where I am now, and just being in growing up in Chicago and then moving to New Mexico and just feeling so far away from everything that I wanted to do and like not figuring out what I wanted to do in my life and then then finding something and then having the courage to be like, you know what, I'm gonna really pursue this and just be like. I'm going to put it out there. This is what I really want. Work hard at it. And then finding new things like stand up and just putting the pedal to the metal and just grinding my ass off. And then just, you know, and it's just like, man, I'm really progressing. I'm not where I want to be, but it's just the excitement of what I can attain in the future is just like, that's exciting. It's like there's hope. There's there's optimism there in my in my heart and soul. At the same time, there's like, you know, pressure, there's uh, stress that comes with that. But overall, I'm just like, man, I really, I really get paid to make people laugh. And I'm just like, at the at the core of that, at the core, at the very core of that, I'm just like, yo, that is amazing. I really make a living off making people laugh. I mean, there's other stuff too, like, you know, on the dramatic side, and like, you know, my, maybe like something else or like I'll book this and that. But at the core of it, I get paid to make people laugh and laughter feels amazing. There's nobody in there saying, I don't like it when I laugh. I don't like the way it makes me feel. Ain't nobody saying that. And if they do say it, they just want some goddamn attention. But it feels good. Like when you laugh, it feels good. Good. It feels good. When you just chuckling, you laughing, you're like, <laughs> it's a great feeling. And I can provide that to people and, and, and make a living off of that and pay my bills on that, man. I'm definitely happy with where my career is now. Although I still have some things I want to attain. It still feels great to be able to do what I do, to have a flexible schedule, to be able to provide for my family and friends when they need it. If it all ends right now, I'll be like, you know what? It was an amazing, amazing journey, and I would feel accomplished. But I def there's definitely more I want to do and a level I want to get to before I'm fully like, all right, I'm good. I'll be laughing, man. Shannon makes me laugh. Shoe game Shannon be cracking me up all the time. Cracking me up all the time, man. It, I don't know what it is about Shannon. There are certain people in your life that you are comedically weak for, meaning it's just something about them in particular that gets to your funny bone all the time. And I'm not I'm not even talking about comedians. This could be like your uncle, your friend, your cousin, your 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 lover, your whoever. And they just really know how to make you laugh. And I don't know what it is. I've had people in my life where uh my friend John L. Howard used to crack me. Man, he had me in stitches. And, like, there's certain people that I don't know what it is, man. I just be laughing. Kev be cracking me up. Kev on stage, he be cracking me up, man. Like, off stage, just the stuff he be saying. I just be like, yo. I've had several, several moments with him where I'm laughing hard, y'all. Like, my stomach is hurting, tears. And Shannon, Shoe Game Shannon be making me laugh, man. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know if it's the way she says stuff. It's definitely the way she talks. What she be saying. Her reactions to certain things. And I just be cracking up. Even down to the we be playing Call of Duty and Shannon to get killed. And I'm just cracking up just because it's Shannon. Just because and her reaction on the death is gonna be funny. 
So if you, if any of you have have seen me playing Call of Duty, you just you just be hearing me cracking up. And she ain't even got to do that much. I don't know. It's just certain. Some people just have the code to your funny bone. They got the code. Oh, man, when she point out the way I'll be dying, man, come on, man. It's comedy, man. Because I don't, I, don't really be, I don't really be laughing that much. Like, I, 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 I'm kind of what you can call a tough crowd. I'm not too tough of a crowd, but I'm not an easy crowd either. So to get me to genuinely laugh all the time, that's rare. That's rare. Tough. So, but Shan, man, Shan be cracking me up on, on the sticks. Cracking me up. I'll be, man, I'll be giggling. Straight giggles. The giggles. So if there, so if there are people that I do that for, where it's just everything I do is just funny to you. I'm glad I'm glad you're having a good time. I'm glad you're having a good time. Well, you can just look at me and as soon as I start talking, you cracking up. I'm like, I'm glad you're having a good time, man. I'm glad you I didn't even say nothing, but you cracking up, that that works for me. Unless, of course, I'm trying to be serious and I'm trying to, I'm trying to. I'm having a serious moment and you cracking up. I'm like, man, stop, man. And honestly, man, I think I think I kind of have I think I have the code to the Baker boys. I'd be cracking them up easily. You know, Serene used to always laugh at me. And I, I would just be saying regular stuff. He cracking up. I'm just like, I'm not even trying to be funny right now. I'm trying to be dead serious up in there. Yeah, there, you hilarious, man. Look out, man. So it's kind of like that with Shannon and me. I'd just be cracking up. Shannon be getting on my nerves though, cause she be having, she be having the pettiest of reasons not to, not to like somebody. I'll be like, what? Yeah, I just don't like the way the top of their ear is shaped. I'll be like, man, come on, man, come on. Like we played Monopoly the other night. That was mad funny. Monopoly was mad funny the other night. Oh, thank you, randomly, CJ. Laughter, man, is great medicine. So you got to surround yourself with people that make you laugh, whether it be us, whether it be people in your own life. Surround yourself. Oh, Serene's laugh was just magic, man. And Sincere now, he's laughing more and more like Serene. Like me and Sabrina heard it the other, other weekend at graduation. He's like, yo, he sounds just like Serene on that laugh. Um... So Scott feel like he got ripped off. My brother Scott, all right. So let me tell y'all the Monopoly story. I'm going to go into the Monopoly story for another night. So we streaming, we playing Monopoly on PlayStation the other night. It's myself, my brother Scott, Shannon, and Reg, right? So we playing Monopoly. And we playing it the traditional way where you have to... You have to have all three colors of a, of a certain property before you can build. So we start off the game. We play a Monopoly. You know what I'm saying? And, and mind you, I was like, yo, I got I got about one or two more Call of Duty games left. And Ray was like, y'all want to play some Monopoly? And I was like, all right, let me play some Monopoly before I get out of here. So I should have been like, nah, I can't do Monopoly because Monopoly is long. Even on the video game tip, our game was over two hours. And mind you, I was about to get off the stick so I can go to bed. But I was like, yo, let's do Monopoly real quick. There ain't no real quick with Monopoly. I should have known that. I knew better. I knew better. We playing Monopoly, man. So I'm having bad rolls. Every time I roll something, I'm landing on an extracurricular piece or space i'm landing on chance i'm landing on community chest i'm landing on free parking i'm landing on income tax 
And when you first start the game, you want to accumulate as much property as you can. You got the 1500 You got the 1500 You looking to buy. You looking to invest in real estate. Why am I landing on community chests and chance and free parking? Because when you need to land on them spaces, when the shit is hot, when the block is hot and it's hotels and houses all around, enemy territory, and you need that community chest, you need that chance, you need that free parking, you need that go to jail, you need that just visiting jail, you need those spaces. They never there for you when you're broke and you're trying to get down the block without stopping at a hotel. They're never there for you then. But when you got money to burn, oh, you're going to land on them raggedy ass spaces all day. Luxury tax. So now they got life on. Uh, do they have life on PlayStation? If they got the game of life on PlayStation, I would love to play that. But anyway, so anyway, so I'm having bad roles. I remember my first turn, I bought States Avenue. States Avenue is the dark purple. So I bought State. Anybody that knows me, I like to be a slumlord in Monopoly. I had a whole joke about it on Last Comic Standard. I like to be a slumlord in Monopoly. Those cheap properties on that first block from Go. You know, it's Go, it's Mediterranean Avenue, it's Baltic Avenue, it's Connecticut Oriental and uh, Connecticut Oriental and Vermont Avenue. Those those five properties, I always want those five properties. Even though they're the cheapest in the game, even when you build a hotel, when you look at it on the game, it's a motel. It looks sleazy. It's like prostitute transactions going on outside of the motel on Baltic Avenue. It's drug deals. It's hand-to-hands. It's shady activity going on. There's a real police presence at the motels on Mediterranean and Baltic. And Connecticut and Oriental and Vermont, that's just a little slight step up, but it's still gritty over there. But I be wanting those. You know what I'm saying? I'm building houses for the cheap. Building houses for the cheap. $50 a house. $50. I'm putting the $50, $50 down. I'm buying a house. I'm buying multiple houses. I got hotels before you know it because it's all low budget. I love that block. That's me. So Shan is rolling doubles. She's just buying up everything, buying up all the real estate. Reg is buying shit. Scott is kind of buying stuff, but he kind of, you know, fumbling the bag. So we all going around, everybody buying property. I'm not getting enough property for my liking. I'm landing on chance, community chest, free parking, luxury taxes. I'm just getting tossed. Then I'm landing on people's property after they already bought it. I'm just like, man, come on, man. But I had my little portfolio together. I had little pieces. I had pieces here and there. I had Mediterranean Avenue. I needed that Baltic. I had, I had a light blue. Like I had Oriental Avenue. I needed the other two. So I had pieces here and there. So when we all get our property up, we all out here building. Now it's time to make deals. I'll be ready to make deals. I don't like to just roam around the board of Monopoly. See, that's where that's where Regger messed up. Reg, she wanted to just keep just roaming around the board. Reg had mad real estate, but didn't build on nothing. I'm like, yo, man, you better spend money while you got it. So whenever I was making the deals, I'm, I'm trading with Shan. I'm getting this property. So I built up over time a nice little portfolio where I had like I had the block that I wanted. I had that whole block locked zone. I had Mediterranean, Baltic, Connecticut, Vermont, uh, Oriental Avenue. I had that whole block. And I acquired Boardwalk and Park Place from Scott because he was going bankrupt. Now, Scott fumbled his own bag because he wanted the property that Shan had. And he was willing to, he was willing to give Shan the property and $300 to get Park Place or something. So something happened to where Shan was like, yo, give me 200 in that property since since something had changed. 
Some dynamic can change. He was like, nah, nah, we're going to keep it 300, and I want, I want it. I'm going to give you the, uh, the Illinois, Illinois Avenue, the red. He wasn't paying attention. I don't know what he was thinking. So he ends up paying the 300 and giving her the Illinois Avenue. But then he realized, wait a minute, hold on, I got ripped off. We was like, yo, we told you, we told you 200 and the red. He was like, nah, nah, he wouldn't let it go. He was on this the rest of the night. And he kept landing on that Illinois Avenue. He kept landing on it time after time. Now, mind you, he out here, he mortgaging property. He keep landing on everybody's shit. He's mortgaging property. He's selling houses. Then he's he's unmortgaging the stuff. He's just in the struggle. At every, every turn, he's in the struggle. Now, mind you, I'm cutting deals with him just to, just to save him. In certain cases, like, yeah, I'll buy that. I'll buy that $150 property for $300 just to, just to help you out, just to keep you on your feet. Because that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, when I'm acquiring these pieces, I'm building. Like, I, I made a deal with Regger. I was like, yo, I will give you... I would give you these two railroads or these it was one or two railroads for your uh for your light blues or whatever. And Reg was like, deal. We shook on it. And as soon as I get the properties, man, I'm building. I'm building. I'm development McGee. Cause why wait? Cause if you ain't if you ain't got the hotels and the houses on it, people just gonna come by and pay you $14, $26 here and there, man. I need that real money. I need triple digits. I need that 600. I need that 450. And yeah, it's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but you know what I'm saying? That, that's going to add up. You catch somebody for the 600, for the 450, that's going to hurt the pockets. And then when Scott was scrambling, fighting for his life, trying to, trying to hold his portfolio together, I ended up with his boardwalk and park place. I built immediately. I only had two houses on Boardwalk. Somebody landed on it. They got assassinated. Two houses on Boardwalk. That's going to tear your ass loose. And how did I acquire such things? I built immediately, man. Scared money don't make money, man. Scared money don't make money. I ended up winning the game. And you know why I was able to win? Reg had more property. Reg had money. Reg had, she had money falling out of her pockets. Pockets was stuffed. She had money in her front pockets, back pockets. She had money in her purse. She had money in her backpack, just roaming around, full of cash, flush with cash, liquid cash. But she was landing on my shit. She was landing on my shit, and I was, I was happy to take the money. I ended up winning the game. I knew, I just knew I was going to be the first man out. Ended up winning the game. Now, I will never play Monopoly again because I'm not going to be able to relive that magic. I'm retiring on that. I'm never playing Monopoly again. I, I'm, I'm riding off into the sunset on that win. I did not expect to win that night. I did not expect it. So, I'm retiring now. <laughs> <laughs> I came through. I started out a humble slumlord with sleazy motels, you know, in the tri state area. And then I built that and I was able to negotiate and put myself in the right position and the right partnerships and the right deals to acquire high end real estate in Boardwalk and Park Place, being at the right place at the right time, making the deal, greasing the palms, showing up with my briefcase. And now here I am on the cover of Forbes. From slumlord to high value real estate mogulry. That was me. Anyway, man. I'm out of here, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to my patron saints, man. Y'all great. I love I loved the topics y'all brought. Uh, y'all are a big a big part of this verbal cardio puzzle right now. And I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, so I'll keep everybody posted on what's new in terms of streaming, in terms of movie nights and all that stuff. Uh, I won't be streaming tonight. I won't be doing a watch party tonight because uh, 
I got shows tonight in Hollywood. Now, if you're listening to this on Wednesday, this is about Tuesday. Um, but Wednesday, I should have some time for a movie night, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I want to thank y'all. I want to give a shout out to the Chatsworth. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all passionately in the shower. And thank you to my listeners, man. And thank you for tuning in to another session of that Verbal Cardio.